A pleasure to me all at last. And here we are once again with films I'm willing to talk about again. And so, I've had some emotional moments about the last thing I talked about, which of course was the Tigger movie. But I do get the feeling some people might want me to talk more about Winnie the Pooh stuff. For now though, I'll steer a little bit away from that because that alone did bring a lot of emotion in my life. So I'm instead going to focus a little more on another movie that came out a few years earlier than the Tigger movie. But it's also animated by the one and only Don Bluth, whom helped to make a lot of Disney stuff possible, especially when they were going through some rather dark times. Yeah, I guess you could say that Don Bluth was the best at bringing inner darkness into the world of animation. But in this case, while this wasn't necessarily full-on Disney material, this at least was a good way to give us something that's more different than the rest. This is simply known as the Pebble and the Penguin. Yeah. This is in fact something that definitely gave us an entirely different view. As we know, Penguin movies are practically enriched in today's society. In the mid-2000s, it was especially common, with March of the Penguins, Surf's Up, Happy Feet, and Madagascar centering a lot around penguins. It seems that penguin movies were pretty much a big gold mine worth fishing out as much of as possible before it went dry. Somehow even today you can find plenty of things about penguins in movies of all sorts. But back in the day it certainly was quite a big time for people to learn about penguins, to know about penguins, to hear what they've been going through. After all, by the 90s and 2000s, there were a lot of tragic incidents that went down in the poles. Remember Exxon Valdez? That infamous oil spill? Yeah. I never did forget. Nor did I then about this movie as well. Because in contrast to most of the other Penguin movies we've seen over the years, The Pebble and the Penguin did bring along the likes of Martin Short, Jim Belushi, and Tim Curry to the screens, just as we've seen them over the years. Because for 1995, contrary to other movies that came out during that year, like Toy Story and Apollo 13, The Pebble and the Penguin might not be on par with their success, but it still does ride easy in the hearts of a lot of people whom have seen it over the years, especially myself. It was yet another piece of VHS memorabilia that I have gotten a hold of, much like most of the other movies I've talked about so far. Although, a good majority nowadays that I can't see can mainly be done so through the eyes of digitalization. Our phones, tablets, computers, etc. Plenty of different ways to watch these old movies, especially the more obscured ones. Anyone who's gone onto YouTube to find something that they clearly recall, even distinctively, but yet have little recollection of it until a certain memory pops up in their head, well, YouTube has been one of the best ways to somehow find these old memories of yours. And The Pebble and the Penguin was certainly no exception. In fact, YouTube Movies does have this as a free option for some people, depending on what your subscription level is like on YouTube Premium. And as one of those, I was able to get a hold of it for free last summer. And that was in fact the last time I saw this, but yet, now that I have a new season of films I'm willing to talk about again, it might as well be time to start talking about this one. Especially when in comparison to all the other Penguin movies I've mentioned. Anyways, the movie itself is centered around Hubie, a Penguin who's not too bright, not too cheerful, not too popular, and not the sharpest tool in the shed. But he still does try to find his way through the South Pole to find his love interest known as Marina. Hubie of course is voiced by the one and only Martin Short, who contrary to other well-known actors of this era, probably is not the best way to put this character forward in a movie like this. But considering the budget, considering the crew at hand, and considering the time and place that this all happened, 
Of course they couldn't have anyone much bigger than him. But still, I feel like that they do well in their own way. In any case though, Hubie does try to find Marina, tries many ways possible that you could say to gain her interest into him, and eventually to spend his life with her. Unfortunately, he is met by a certain emperor penguin by the name of Drake, voiced by Tim Curry. And eventually gets to the point where Drake ends up really coming down on Hubie like you'd never thought. Even when Hubie's on the edge of a cliff of an iceberg, he doesn't back down. Like, he has no chill in regards to this poor penguin's safety. Ugh, I'm sorry. There's just a lot of things about it that I still find ridiculous. Of course, Hubie is not a great thing because he apparently can't fight back and it was common for emperor penguins to be very dominant and intimidating but in the case of hubie it gets so bad for him that he eventually gets flung onto an iceberg and just drifts away from his home marina is basically trapped with drake so the whole movie is centered about hubie trying to find his love interests as he's floating away on an iceberg. Eventually, he's picked up by a ship. A ship known as the Misery. Yeah, quite a name for quite a ship like this. He's basically locked in the inner cellars of the ship, along with some other animals, fellow penguins, birds, etc. They eventually all come together and sing a certain musical note, and it is sure to be a depressing thing for us to watch. Back then, I was very much unaware that Don Bluth would be this dark. I mean, even All Dogs Go to Heaven had its own unique style in terms of darkness within the plot, within the story, and within the character roles that are played through and through. But The Pebble and the Penguin, in contrast to other Don Bluth properties we've seen, really hammers it up on the dark parts. It was bad enough that Hubie really had it tough with Drake hounding him like a cat on a diseased mouse. But trust me when I say, it does get a lot worse. Everybody else is in complete misery, much like the ship itself. Eventually though, a certain rock hopper named Rocco finds a way to escape and Hubie goes along with him for the ride. They both settle on the shores of a certain sandy beach trying to contemplate their next move. And the conversations do eventually get down to a certain point where they do agree to find Marina and also to stay sharp. Because out there on those waters, there's not just the problem with Drake, but there's also the problems of so-called leopard seals and killer whales. Yeah, it sure is. Darker than you realize. I mean, the sea lions were definitely a no-go, by all means. Considering they're basically seals. I mean, not too many people could find them scary. A lot of them are viewed as very cute on the internet, especially. And killer whales, better known as orcas, have little similarities in a way. But as we saw in the Free Willy trilogy... The orca isn't truly meant to be a devastating killing machine. No, not exactly. Some people do find them to be rather friendly creatures, which is beyond agreeable. I mean, you ever gone to SeaWorld? You ever had the chance to encounter one up close? They don't seem that bad. Like I said, though, there's just a lot of obstacles for them to overcome. And with every minute that comes by and every minute that Marina's trying to wait for Hubie and Drake is just taunting him and trying to nestle his way into Marina rather than the other way around where we could probably have the good chance for Marina to fight back, unlike what Hubie could do, but nothing really seems to take place. And... As it goes much further, the challenge is, based on the leopard seal, and eventually the killer whales, really do cause Hubie and Rocco to even become separated. 
Hubie becomes convinced that Rocco is actually dead. But once he finally finds his way back home and faces down Drake, he has a whole new sense of courage within him. Demanding Drake let her go and he faces him. And just when you think Drake could have the upper hand, Hubie is fighting back. All of that that he had gotten from good old Rocco, thinking that he got himself killed. That's just the whole thing about it, you know? When you have a set of dark, dreary, and depressing things going on in your life, it helps to build strength, to build courage, to build a true sense of justice for yourself and other people. After all that we've gone through throughout the past decade, of course we are going to have a whole new sense of emboldenment and enlightenment. Because we now have the ability to no longer back down, to stand our ground and prepare for the worst in many possible ways. But oh boy, even when Drake supposedly is defeated after falling down to the bottom of the shaft, he apparently is still alive. In fact, he comes up, lifting a piece of the floor, throwing it towards Hubie. The structure itself that Drake occupies crumbles to the ground. He gets buried in the rubble. Hubie, Rocco, Marina barely make it out alive. And once they find their way to safety, it's this little pebble that fell out of the sky that truly became a big part as to why Marina now feels that Hubie is her penguin to be with forever and ever. Yeah, that's basically the whole thing about this. A pebble comes out of the sky, becomes a part of Hubie and his life. It also becomes the main reason why he and she are now together as one. And so, I feel like we have ourselves another one cleared up here. But I do feel that with a few positives and negatives in mind, being that this is Don Bluth material still is quite a, in a way dark, scary, but also courageous, strong, and emboldening. I feel like that this movie does deserve itself at least a good scoring compared to what most other critics might give this one. So with that in mind, it's a good 6.5 out of 10.1. So certainly not a great way to piece together the life of a penguin, finding his mate out there in the South Pole. But it still does give a lot of good vibes to those who are looking to go to Don Bluth and learn about his work. Because compared to Disney, he himself has worked with other people over the years and truly turned a lot of eyes around in his favor. Anyone who's looking forward to watching old animated films but with a whole darker setting, Don Bluth would be an absolute choice award. So definitely check out his work when you can. And for those who have watched Pebble and the Penguin as well, feel free to leave anything in the comment section below regarding how you felt about this movie when you first watched it and more on your recent viewing of this movie. And soon enough, I'll be back with more films I'm willing to talk about again material, so that way we can all prep for some more newer film materials in theaters. No tricks uh, to be playing on you